Well, well, I think I'm gonna have a spicy thought on this episode. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 12 of Supernatural Season 8, As Time Goes By. This is basically the introduction of the Men of Letters. The brother's grandfather, from their dad's side, jumps into the future while bringing a demon knight. He is trying to figure out how to go back into the past, while also a very secret vault is alluded to, and the brothers get to learn more about their grandfather personally, and kind of just how much of a shitty actor he is. I'm going to be a bit harsh. I think whoever they hired as their granddad, he's terrible. He pulls me out so much of this episode. I understand he's trying to be an old tiny bookworm who's a bit full of himself, but I think he's just cruddy. What did I do wrong? Who the hell are you, mister? Not now. I'm thinking. <laughs> Please, I can assure you there's no need for violence. From his introduction, there must be another elder out there who can help us figure out how to stop Abaddon and what to do with the box. To his attempt to get to his stuff from the hunter shop. You can use a tear of a dragon and a pinch of the sands of time, but don't bother wrapping it up. I'll be using it right away. To when he fucking dies. He just got stabbed in the goddamn stomach and he's just fucking standing there for what feels like an hour asking someone to remind him what his line is. That being fall the fuck down. I do like what he does with the demon trap bullet. Don't get me wrong, it was a really cool idea and I kind of wish they had used that before or even after this. They, they don't ever use this again if I'm correct. But he's just such a cruddy actor. His inflection, his delivery, his mannerisms and chemistry with the boys just suck. Again, this could have been a little bit on his writing, but I don't know. I think he's just so underwhelming. He brings a lot of issues to this episode when the overall narrative is actually pretty good. I was admittedly a little bit worried that they had just introduced a big bad with a MacGuffin kind of idea, but they do turn it this into, technically speaking, a Monster of the Week episode that has matter to it, that has substance to it and eventually is going to lead into something else and that actually kind of brings me to a point that i've had with this season is if season eight had gotten the season three treatment in the means that a writer strike would prevent a 23 episode order and make it go down to 16 or 14 this season would have been dope because the storylines admittedly have been dragged out a bit there's been a lot of very little progress progress still unlike season seven which had none a lot of the time but it also could have been condensed. It kind of really comes to a head with this episode. I do like though how it ends with the box, the key not being explained or not further following up on it. Of course, that'll probably be the next episode. I, I do like these little breadcrumbs that Carver has been laying as the season goes on. It's just taking its sweet time. It's kind of a good and a bad thing, I guess to say. The old man from X-Files just looked like a grandpa. This guy is just a hack of an actor, but Yes, this is the actual Grandpa Winchester. We'll go, we'll, we'll, we have established that now. When it comes down to the sacrifice that happens at the end, Sam and Dean are doing good. Grandpa kind of does okay here. But again, this guy is just the weakest part about this whole episode. I knew there was a reason why I didn't like this episode when it came out, and it was very much reaffirmed to me that it is this guy, because he just sucks. He's just a cruddy actor. Maybe he's gotten better since then, but his performance in this episode is just so nauseating, so annoying, so blah. He almost makes the fucking whiner kid from the Bitten episode look a bit better. I like the story, even if simplistic. I like the little bit of the twist with the crossroads bullet. I did like Abaddon and what they do with her by chopping her up and putting her in concrete blocks. And I like the little men of letters, little tidbit. But overall, this episode isn't as woo for me as it seems to be for a lot of other people. I think it's because of what it introduced and what it implemented that maybe makes it a little bit more for people. But for me, personally, I don't like this episode. I don't like a majority of it. I like how it ends. Kind of, and that's it. So in the end, I'm gonna give As Time Goes By a three out of seven. That dude's acting just brought it down for me. I understand this is supposed to be a sentimental piece about the brothers and the history of the family and just the wacky story that is the Winchester history, but the fact that he just goes, if I go back in time, there won't be an apocalypse. It's like, what the fuck, dude? I understand that he's in desperation mode and he wants to atone for what he did to his son. 
unintentionally but ugh. anyways those are my thoughts about this episode let's see what you guys have to say all right we have a lot of comments here so let's get through them as time goes by it's a good episode mainly due to sam and dean's interaction with their grandfather as well as introducing us to a good villain in abaddon and being important for introducing us to the men of letters which in my opinion was one of the coolest concepts in the series despite what andrew dad would do with them in season 12 i think they work especially in the carver era yeah they do introduce a few things and i did like abaddon i i thought that yeah i can agree with those elements as time goes by is where carver era re invented supernatural lore. I once felt it inadvertently created an alternative timeline for the show because the first time we see Dean time travel is at a diner with his dad and someone tells John say hello to your old man for me. Another thing that confuses me is why the blood spell that leads the family jumps 55 years in the future. It's a cool concept but confuses me. Yeah, it's kind of like a MacGuffin sort of thing. Aside from the issues, I really enjoyed this episode that explores John's family. Mary's family was explored previously from the Gamble era, so naturally it makes sense to explore John's. I agree with that. I love how Sam points out that why angels predestined John and Mary to get together, the Winchesters and the Campbells, the Brains and the Brawn. <laughs> Yeah. Abaddon is also a fun addition to the show and brings back my love of demons that was done with during the Kripke era. A pretty cool Devil's Trap bullet is a thing now. Overall, the episode is a fun way to re-explore the Winchester mythology in a fresh new way. I did like the Devil's Trap bullet. That was a pretty cool idea. The first episode with the first notable retcon. Don't get me wrong, Men of Letters is an interesting idea to know how the secret society that hunted demons and monsters for God knows how long. I liked it. My problem is that Dean and Sam are the legacy thanks to their grandpa from their father's side. Excuse me, wasn't it said somewhere in the earlier seasons that their father's fa side of the family was ordinary people that had nothing to do with the supernatural stuff? I even remember how in season four in the beginning episode where Dean goes back in time where their parents are young. I remember how some random guy in the diner said to John, say hi to your father, John. That's my biggest problem. Oh, I get what you were saying earlier. Oh, I get what Joe was meaning before. Yeah, that is a... That is a bit of a wreck. <laughs> oh dear. That's a... Oh wow, actually, yeah, that's a big fucking retcon. That's my biggest problem with the episode, changing established things, but not only with this episode from onward, this is going to be a reoccurring thing, besides that this is a good slash decent episode. Grandpa wasn't awful like Campbell. Uh, I think... <laughs> I wish we had Grandpa Winchester more, and Abaddon was a good setup. Ooh, yeah, well, we had a different opinion on that one there. As time goes by, is a perfect follow-up, as it is also a comfort food for me. The cold open of the episode after them in the bunker, comfortable, also in a way that gives me comfort. Anyways, the actors who played the grandfather did such a good job and made me believe he was a Winchester and having a new kind of threatening demon. Okay, were we watching the same performance here, guys? Because he was awful in this episode, at least for me. But I do agree with you, I like the beginning of the bunker. I wish they kept him around longer. No, thank God he dies. I liked his reaction to learning the fate of his son. I would have liked it if they had brought him back so in that episode that Jeffrey D. Morgan could come back and reconcile. Either way, it was an infant's if a uh, nice episode. Ooh, six out of seven. Jesus Christ, no, not that high. This episode leaves me sad at the end. I really like the character of Henry Winchester in just one episode. I grew to care and love him. Man, everyone's so nice to this guy. And, and more than I ever did with Samuel. The guy did a great job as Henry. It was interesting to see the John side of the family. I like seeing him interacting with Sam and Dean. He truly was the best better grandfather to them than Samuel, and I really enjoy the demon Abaddon. She's truly a brilliant protag antagonist here, and I really like to see what happens to Henry, but I'm glad that this won't be the last time we see him. I would have loved to have him appear more in the show. Really? What is it? Everyone really likes this guy. I hate him. <laughs> Dean was a little quick to be bitterly judge and condemn Henry in this episode, although given his loyalty to John, I guess it's somewhat understandable. I didn't like it though. The writers did a good job making the demons formidable again when Abaddon is immune to the knife. It felt like a flashback to the first seasons. Yeah, agree with that one. Their ultimate solution for using a devil's trap bullet carved into was a pretty nice improvisation. And it was Dean's idea. Despite sometimes being labeled as the less smart of the hunter, he came up with that. Abaddon being stabbed with a knife. Oh well, that's no way to treat a lady. 2013. Guess the Mayans were wrong about that one. Remember when all that hype? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I thought this episode was pretty good overall. I hope you liked it. I like Henry as a one-off character. He will be back in season nine. Oh dear. It's see, it's it's sad to see how tragically affected the entire Winchester family was. I like Abaddon as a returning villain, but how they bring her back after this, it's a leap for sure. Oh dear. Uh, interesting that the Abaddon Knight of Hell, which in my opinion leads to some of the coolest things in Supernatural postseason 5 came in the marker, and the Men of Letters are the coolest concept that leads to shit. Well, at least we got to meet the better grandpa. Also, God. 
damn, Alina Huffman is hot in this. She can drag me to hell any day. Wow. All right, guys, that was my hot take about this episode. I hope some of you understood where I was coming from. I'm sorry if I uh, disappointed any of you, but we have another episode coming up. We have, oh, fuck me. Talk about disappointment. We've got Everybody Hates Hitler. If this is the one that I think it is. No, this isn't the one. Is it the one? Oh, no, this isn't it. Okay, this isn't the one where they had Hitler. Okay, that episode was terrible. I remember how kind of forgettable this episode was. I guess we'll find out. Anyways, give me your guys' thoughts about that episode, and I will read those off in the next review. Thank you guys once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested, more subscribe. Until then, we are moving on to episode 13, guys. We are now in the final 11 of this season. It still feels like the soul much more to go. Anyways, I'll see you guys next week.